Good evening and welcome back to another episode of The Longing. This is going to be my second attempt at recording this because the first attempt failed. <laughs> so that's why the book looks like it's looks like I've read through four and that's because I have uh, and it failed. So anyway we're going to continue to read. He became fearful of corners. It seemed to him that there was safety in concealment. Where could he hide to be inconspicuous when, he, when the light returned? At last he sat down upon a seat in a recess on one of the higher ways, conceiving he was alone there. He squeezed his knuckles into his weary eyes. Suppose when he looked again he found the dark trough of parallel ways and that, that intolerable attitude of edifice gone. Suppose he were to discover the whole story of these last few days, the awakening, the shouting multitudes, the darkness and the fighting, a phantasmagoria, a new and more vivid sort of dream. It must be a dream. It was so inconsecutive, so reasonless. Why were the people fighting for him? Why should this saner world regard him as owner and master? So he thought, sitting blinded, and then he looked again, half hoping in spite of his ears to see some familiar aspect of the life of the 19th century, to see, perhaps, the little harbour of Boscastle about him, the cliffs of Pentagon, or the bedroom of his home. But fact takes no heed of human hopes. A squad of men with a black banner tramped athwart the nearer shadows, intent on conflict, and beyond rose that giddy wall of frontage, vast and dark, with the dim, incomprehensible lettering showing faintly on its face. It is no dream, he said, no dream, and he bowed his face upon his hands. Chapter 11. The Old Man Who Knew Everything He was startled by a cough close at hand. He turned sharply, and peering saw a small, hunched-up figure sitting a couple of yards off in the shadow of the enclosure. Have ye any news? asked the high-pitched, wheezy voice of a very old man. Graham hesitated. None, he said. I, st I stay here till the lights come again, said the old man. These blue scoundrels are everywhere. Everywhere. Graham's answer was inarticulate assent. He tried to see the old man, but the darkness hid his face. He wanted very much to respond, to talk, but he did not know how to begin. Dark and damnable, said the old man, suddenly. Dark and damnable. Turned out of my room among all these dangers. That's hard, ventured Graham. That's hard on you. Darkness. An old man lost in the darkness. And all the world gone mad. War and fighting. The police beaten and rogues abroad. Why don't they bring some to protect us? No more dark passages for me. I fell over a dead man. You're safer with company, said the old man, if it's company of the right sort. And peered frankly. He rose suddenly and came towards Graham. Apparently, the scrutiny was satisfactory. The old man sat down as if relieved to be no longer alone. Eh, he said, but this is a terrible time. War and fighting and the dead lying there. Men, strong men, dying in the dark. Sons, I have three sons. God knows where they are tonight. The voice ceased, then repeated, quavering. God knows where they are tonight. Graham stood revolving a question that should not betray his in ignorance. Again the old man's voice ended the pause. This Ostrog will win, he said. He will win, and what the world will be like under him no one can tell. My sons are under the wind vanes, all three. One of my daughters-in-law was his mistress for a while. His mistress were not common people. Though they've sent me to wander tonight and take my chance. I knew what was going on, before most people, but this darkness, and to fall over a dead body suddenly in the dark. His wheezy breathing could be heard. Ostrog, said Graham. The greatest boss the world has ever seen, said the voice. Graham ransacked his mind. The council has few friends among the people, he hazarded. Few friends, and poor ones at that. They've had their time. Eh, hey, they should have kept to the clever ones. But twice they held election, and Ostrog, and now it has burst out and nothing can stay it. Nothing can stay it. Twice they rejected Ostrog, Ostrog the boss. I heard of his rages at the time. He was terrible. Heaven save them, 
for nothing on earth can now he has raised the labor companies upon them no one else would have dared all the blue canvas armed and marching he will go through with it he will go through he was silent for a little while this sleeper he said and stopped yes said graham well the senile voice sank to a confidential whisper the dim pale face came close the real sleeper yes said graham died years ago what said graham sharply years ago died years ago you don't say so said graham i do i do say so he died this sleeper who's woke up they changed in the night a poor drugged insensible creature but i mustn't tell all i know i mustn't tell all i know for a little while he muttered inaudibly his secret was too much for him i don't know the ones that put him to sleep that was before my time but i know the man who injected the stimulants and woke him again it was ten to one wake or kill wake or kill ostrog's way graham was so astonished at these things that he had to interrupt to make the old man repeat his words to re-question vaguely before he was sure of the meaning and folly of what he heard and his awakening had not been natural was that an old man's sense uh, senile superstition too or had it any truth in it feeling in the dark corners of his memory he presently came on something that might conceivably be an impression of some such stimulating effect it dawned upon him that he had happened upon a lucky encounter that at last he might learn something of the new age the old man wheezed a while and spat and then the piping rem reminiscent voice resumed the first time they rejected him i followed it all rejected whom said graham the sleeper sleeper no ostrog he was terrible terrible and he was promised then promised certainly the next time fools they were not to be more afraid of him now all the cities his millstone and such as we dust upon dust ground upon it dust ground upon it until he set to work the workers cut each other's throats and murdered a chinaman or a labor policeman at times and left the rest of us in peace dead bodies robbing darkness such a thing hasn't been done hasn't been this gross of years eh but tis ill on small folks when the great fall out it's ill did you say there had not been what for a gross of years eh said the old man the old man said something about clipping his words and made him repeat this a third time fighting and slaying and weapons in hand and fools bawling freedom and the like said the old man not in all my life has there been that these are like the old days for sure when the paris people broke out three gross of years ago that's what i mean hasn't been but it's the world's way it had to come back i know i know this five years ostrog has been working and there has been trouble and trouble and hunger and threats and high talk and arms blue canvas and murmurs no one safe everything sliding and slipping and now here we are revolt and fighting and the council come to its end you are rather well informed on these things said graham i know what i hear it isn't all babble machine with me no said graham wondering what babble machine might be and you are certain this ostrog you are certain ostrog organized this rebellion and arranged for the waking of the sleeper just to assert himself because he was not elected to the council <clears throat> everyone knows that i should think said the old man except just fools he meant to be master somehow in the council or not everyone who knows anything knows that and here we are with dead bodies lying in the dark why where have you been if you haven't heard all about the trouble between ostrog and the vernays and what do you think the troubles are about the sleeper eh you think the sleeper's real and woke of his own accord eh i'm a dull man older than i look and forgetful said graham lots of things that have happened especially of late years if i was the sleeper to tell you the truth i couldn't know less about them eh said the voice old are you you don't sound so very old but it's not everyone keeps his memory to my time of life truly but these notorious things 
But you're not so old as me, not nearly so old as me. Well, I ought not to judge other men by myself, perhaps. I'm young for so old a man. Maybe you're old for so young. That's it, said Graham, and I have a queer history. I know very little. And history, practically, I know no history. The Sleeper and Julius Caesar are all the same to me. It's interesting to hear you talk of these things. I know a few things, said the old man. I know a thing or two. But, hark. And with that, we come to the end of the episode. Um, <clears throat> so I will say thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you all have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night. No matter what time of day it is, I hope you all have a wonderful one of it. And as always, we will be back tomorrow for more of The Longing. Goodbye.